so as Louise said, my talk is also about creativity and just linking it to, to kindness. It echoes back to what my colleagues have said that doing arts activities, uh, using theater, music, arts and crafts, it is encouraging kindness in the sense of collaboration. So as Louise said, my main mm, area of expertise is theater as a teacher, director, actor. And when you're part of a theater performance, there really is a sense of working together, cooperation, collaboration. Uh, singing is therapeutic. Any Anytime you're using music in the class, you're tapping into different energies. So any activities involving singing together or music is also very beneficial for, for our students. Um, arts and crafts activities can, in, can inspire pride in your own work and appreciation when you see your classmates, what they have done. And when you're acting, when you're improvising, you have to listen, you have to react to what's happening with the other actors, your, your classmates or, or, or co-workers. And the, a fundamental rule of theater is yes and, is saying yes to whatever your scene partner has suggested. If someone says, I love this amusement park, let's go on the roller coaster, you're at an amusement park and you're going to go on the roller coaster. So I think that's another important lesson of saying yes, accepting what the circumstances are, and then adding information. I have a, a PowerPoint with some information I'm going to share with you, and, and then I'll stop sharing it when I show you some activities, because I want the session to be mostly ideas uh, a little bit of theory, but I want to actually show you some examples of quick creative games and activities that, that you can use in your class. So first, we'll talk about creativity. Some people think, oh, I'm not creative. I can't do it. So I want to start by saying everyone has the potential to be creative. The excuse of I'm not creative, I don't buy it, okay? Maybe you're not feeling the most creative today or there's a time pressure or the weather, that's fine, but please don't accept or use that excuse. Everyone has a creative element of their personality. A lot of the activities that we have talked about today and that I'm going to talk about are theater, music, arts and crafts, but that doesn't mean that those are the only areas where you can be creative. You can be creative in social sciences, history, science, math. Please use creativity, use these ideas, no matter what subject you are teaching. Sometimes people think that unstructured free time is the easiest or best way for students to be creative. And I just want to say that that isn't the best way Students do need some structure. Sometimes if you're given a blank piece of paper and, and told, be creative, <laughs> what? Okay, <laughs> like just looking at a blank piece of paper, it's overwhelming. So I think giving some basic instructions, some uh, structured activity, allowing your students to be creative within these limits will actually be more successful. And the final uh, truth here is you just have to go for it. You have to make the decision to take a risk uh, with your lesson, try a new activity, and, and don't put too much pressure on yourself of like, oh my God, but I'm not an actor. I think these activities, I've tried them with students of all ages, little kids, adults, and, and they work. So please, I hope you will use one or two or five of my activities that I'm going to teach you now. In general, Ideas or games or activities where you encourage creativity are those activities where there is not just one right and then the rest of the answers are wrong. So do activities without a right or wrong answer. Activities where there are multiple possible 
solutions, multiple possible ideas so that you're not in this binary yes, no, right, wrong kind of mentality. When you're reading a story or asking questions, try to ask open-ended questions, questions that begin with why or how or what, as opposed to yes or no questions. Yes or no questions, it's that binary yes, no, right, wrong. Whereas open-ended questions, you might get answers, you will get answers that surprise you. Often when we are in a classroom, we tend to sit at our desks, we use pen and paper, arts and crafts, pen and paper or markers. So I encourage you to use different materials. Um, materials you can find outside, recycled materials, newspapers, yogurt cups, um, you can go to the store and buy, I don't know, inexpensive cotton or fabric or uh, anything. Natural materials, of course, are great, but try to avoid the, the mentality of paper and pen. I think people can be more creative when they have different materials in front of them. When you're doing an activity, specifically an arts and craft activity, we always recommend that you, the teacher, do the activity first at home to see how difficult it is to have an example. But the problem is if you go to your class and show your example, you might have all of your students doing the exact same thing because we've been taught that you copy what the teacher has, has done. And this is this goes against uh, creativity. So my advice, if you can, is to show multiple examples. And I'm going to later show you what I mean. But by giving multiple examples, you're teaching your, your class that there isn't just one correct way to do this arts and crafts project, for example. Just like asking questions without a right or wrong answer, do activities without a winner or loser. Games where it's a collaboration, where there are groups, where it's th the success comes with uh, doing the activity and not necessarily there's a competition with a winner and a loser. And finally, when possible, get your students moving around out of their desks. We tend to be more creative when we're walking around and, and not in this sort of static, bored posture. Okay, I'm going to now show you some activities. I'm gonna shop, stop sharing my screen. Uh, the first activity is called pass the pen. I have a pen or pass the spoon. So if you have a spoon at home, you can bring your spoon to class. I think the spoon is easier, but you can totally use a pen, no problem. There are two versions of this activity. The first is you're passing the spoon around the circle and each student has to use the spoon as a different object. So one person could do this and the teacher asks, what is it? And everyone says, it's a toothbrush pass to the next person. Uh, and it could be, what is it? Mascara, or it could be a hairbrush. I don't know why I'm using all personal hygiene. It could be a, a violin. It could be a, a microphone, okay? And each person is passing it around. Um, there isn't a lot of English production. So if your students are shy to speak, they just have to mime, okay? And the second version of pass the spoon is, it's a spoon or a pen or pencil. As it gets passed around the, the circle, the teacher gives adjectives like it's hot. And the students are like, oh, 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 as they pass to the next person or it's stinky. And you're like, oh, 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 as you're passing, and you have a couple people and then every two or three people, the teacher can say a new adjective. It's expensive, it's cute. Okay, and the teacher is saying, use your face, use your body language as the coaching, as the object goes around the circle. Again, it's a five minute activity, getting people to be creative, use their imagination. The next activity I want to teach you is called the letter. And we have a, I have a blank piece of paper. There's nothing written here. It's an imagination exercise. I'm gonna do an example. And then I'm going to ask you, what 
did the letter say? And if you want, you can type in the chat box your idea of what do you think the letter said? Again, it's blank. There's nothing actually here, okay? Example number one. Any ideas? If I can ask good news or it's a letter, <laughs> good news or bad news. Yes, someone said it, energy bills. I was thinking it's the electricity bill and it's super expensive, but all of these ideas are perfectly valid. My child asking for money, my boss telling me I have to work during the Christmas holidays. It's not like there's a right or wrong answer. They're all great, but there is the uh, what I was imagining in my in my mind. Example number two, a little easier. What's the letter? Yeah, it's good news. It's a love letter. Exactly. It's a or, or I passed the exam. I passed the exam. Ooh. I was thinking a love letter. OK, so uh, sometimes when you the teacher does an example or two examples and then you ask your students, OK, who's next? And they might be a bit hmm, shy. I don't know. I'm not ready. So I would suggest uh, putting your class in pairs and having them brainstorm with a partner first. What are different kind of letters that you receive? Um, it could be a, a winning the lottery or an invitation to a party, right? So have them brainstorm some ideas first, and then you can say, okay, who wants to come and show? Because sometimes to go right from mm, nothing to acting, it's uh, a little stressful. You want to have a minute to sort of talk, talk about your ideas with someone first. Uh, the next activity, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. It's easier if I can show you. It's called first line or first line, last line. Basically, you put your students into pairs or groups of three, and you give them the first line of a dialogue. Now, I, I will show you some suggestions in a minute, but my suggestions are quite general and open-ended. They're specific in the sense that it, you can imagine a situation, but they're general because you can imagine multiple different situations. Now, there's a rule in improvisation that you have to establish the who, the what, and the where as quickly as possible who, who are the characters, what, what is happening, and where, where are you? So let me show you an example. My example is, I've got some bad news. So hopefully your students will think of different situations. Just off the top of my head, I'm thinking it could be a doctor and a patient. I've got some bad news. What is it, doctor? Okay, and then the audience knows doctor patient. We're in the doctor's office. It could be a teacher student. I've got some bad news. Oh no, you failed the exam. No, oh! and we know teacher student. So this example is specific, but applies to it could be a romantic. I've got some bad news. I'm leaving you. Okay, there are multiple interpretations for the bad news. Other examples, I thought of, what's that? Or I feel dizzy, but we don't know why. Why are you dizzy? Please say yes. We don't know why. Your students will fill in the specific information. Don't do that here. What is that? And your students can use mime or, or add more language in, this, in the following sentences. It doesn't have to be a very long activity. It can just be no, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. As long as they establish who, what, and where, fine. Now I do, I call this game first line, last line, because as an alternative, you could give your students one sentence, which is the first line, and a different sentence, which could be the last line. And the challenge is for them to invent a story where they have to go from the first line to the last line. So you could say, your scene begins with, I've got some bad news. 
And it ends with, don't do that here. And then they have to uh, talk to their partners and invent how would they go from that line to that line. An alternative is to use sounds. There are dozens, if not a hundred different sounds in English. I have here the example, woohoo, which is like celebra celebration or meh, which means I don't care. It's not so great. Or whoa, which is, hey, hold on, slow down. Or ew, which is disgusting, gross. So then you can give them sounds and they can either go from one sound and then add language and then to the other sound, or you give each person a different sound, your ew, your woohoo, and they have to incorporate their sound into a story, into a short scene or Im improvisation. Okay, the next game, where's the chair? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because you need to see my chair. <clears throat> I think you can adjust my camera. Okay, in, in this game, uh, one person, the teacher starts with an idea. I'm going to enter a place that has a chair and I would like you to put in the chat box, where am I? Okay, example number one. Perfect, cinema, 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 cinema. Yes, exactly, I was trying to do cinema, thank you. Example number two, again, with a chair. Good, horse, riding a horse, perfect. Motorbike over some a bumpy road, yeah, a horse, cowboy, perfect. I, I wanted to do two different examples. I, I did the horse to show that the chair could also be any kind of seat. Obviously, you don't put a chair on a horse, you use a saddle. But in this game, it's any kind of seat chair, saddle, whatever. Uh, again, I would ask my students to brainstorm first with their partner, where are locations where you sit down? And they could be talking with their partner. Uh, it could be a car, it could be in the office, it could be a piano recital, it could be the roller coaster. Okay, and then once they ha have had 30 seconds to brainstorm, to share ideas with a partner, then I say, okay, Miguel, do you want to try? And I get different students to come. Again, low English output. They just have to mine, and then everyone else can say where they are. Uh, a, an important piece of information, I would never force someone to act if they don't want to. If someone's like, no, 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 I'm like, okay, no problem, next game, next person. Uh, I wouldn't want them to feel stressed out. The next game is called 10 seconds to make and the time pressure makes people do it and not think about it. So the teacher says, you have 10 seconds to make a robot, 10, nine. And it, you can do it individually where each person is their own mm, robot or you can put them into groups of three and together they make with their bodies one robot. And you can say 10 seconds to make a washing machine. And if you're counting 10, nine, eight, there isn't time for this discussion of, now what kind of washing machine? Is it a Maytag? How, how many kilos of laundry? No, you just have to do it. Okay, I'm the door, I'm the clothes, I'm the, I don't know, like the container, I'm the plug. And they're just working together to make the object. Some groups are really fast and 10 seconds is too much. So you could even do five, four, three, and they have to make the object. Let me go back to the PowerPoint. I had a couple more possible objects. I thought robot, hair dryer, bridge, fountain, washing machine. These are all different things that they could make. And, and you can either have the, the same number of uh, people in each group, so three or four people per group, or each time you can say a new number, four hair dryer, and they're in groups of four, and they make a hair dryer. Five fountain, groups of five, they make a fountain. 
each group of five makes their own fountain. All right, a bit of theory. Doing creative activities in the classroom, it does require um, changing your mental, changing the teacher's mentality, mainly letting go of the control a little bit. Uh, as teachers, we often have everything programmed. This happens, this happens, this happens. But to encourage creativity, you do have to let go a little bit. And I mean, try not to watch the clock too much. Obviously, you've planned an activity. You, you have an estimation of how long it should take. But I would say allow for a couple extra minutes in case students are surprising you. You don't want to be like, okay, stop, stop, stop. Um, I said earlier the 10 seconds to make, okay, that time pressure for that activity, but another activity, you don't want to cut them off too soon. Let your students decide where the story goes. If you're telling a story, you can say, what happens next? Who arrives? And let them contribute ideas. It may not be what you were expecting. It was a dark and stormy December. Okay, all right. I was thinking night, but December's okay. Like, go with the flow. Sometimes students will give you an answer that you didn't expect but it's not necessarily wrong. The challenge here is your instinct is that's that's not what I was thinking. No, but when you're being flexible, when you're being creative, accept multiple possible answers, even if they're not the standard response or the, the answer that you were expecting to have. Give your students the benefit of the doubt, be a bit more flexible. Okay, this activity is called Every Picture Tells a Story. I have a painting here, George Seurat. I think it's called Sunday Afternoon on La Grande Jatte. Uh, I chose this painting because there's lots of characters. Um, similar to what Margarita said, with using a picture, you could have your students act out. They could be the characters of the painting. Now, this is obviously a professional production. My students don't have time to get costumes and uh, umbrellas. But if you look at them side by side, you can see how they line up. Mm, and then they can act out the story. They can decide, as Margarita said with her activity, where are they going? What's What happened before? What happens next? Uh, as Luis said, I live in Madrid, so there's another famous painting in El Prado, the Prado Museum. Uh, Las Meninas, another great example. You could have your students act out, get into the position of the characters, and then invent the story behind the painting. For arts and crafts projects, as I mentioned earlier, using recycled materials. So here I have a piece of newspaper. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I suggest you can use newspaper when you're studying weather vocabulary. And again, any response is fine. You say, it's hot. And one student could be like, another student could be like, mopping the sweat. Another student could be protecting themselves from the sun. All fine. It's windy. It's cold. It could be a scarf, it could be a coat, it could be a hat. Um, it's There's no right or wrong answer. You give everyone a piece of newspaper and you have them act out. You could also invent you're walking in the forest and they can turn their newspapers into binoculars. You don't need to spend lots of money on mm, specific materials. You can use recycled materials and with their imagination, they they can act out what they need to. So here's an example of just newspaper and tape, and we have the royal family, okay? So it's not elaborate costumes, but you can see creating costumes for a theater play. You could do a fashion show. I mentioned uh, using different materials. Sometimes the best instructions are limited instructions. If you tell students step-by-step step what to do, you're gonna get 25 copies of the exact same thing. If you give more general or open instructions, such as make something useful, 
then student and you give them the materials, then they can create something uh, with their imagination. I've actually done this with an adult class and people made a little tray using newspaper and tape. They made a tray for papers. They made a little purse. It's, it's really great to see what people can do with limited instructions. I mentioned showing multiple examples. My next slide is a, a snowman. It's the winter fair, a, a holiday theme. It's a snowman activity. And you can see three different examples using plates and paper and googly eyes and buttons. But if you show multiple examples of, of your arts and crafts project, the message you're sending to your students is that there isn't only one way to do it, that you uh, accept creativity within the, the confines of you're making a snowman and these are the materials. My final mm, area of activities or, or suggestions is using music in the classroom. I have an activity called move to the music. Maybe it's a good transition activity when you're trying to mm, <clears throat> mix up groups or people have been sitting for a long time. I have this song, I think you can hear it. It's a general upbeat music. It's called Lucky Elephant. It has a rhythm has music going along with it. And you can ask your students to move, move like a monkey or move like a lion, or you can use a location. You're in the jungle, walk through the jungle. You're under the sea, move like a dolphin. You could be in different transportation. Everyone, you are a bus or an airplane and they're moving around and you say don't copy the others be your own airplane and some people might, might do this and might do this and it's all fine you could also say um walk like a princess or a character in a story that you just read moving around the room and the music is providing the rhythm the background Find someone who, again, you could play music. You could say, find someone who has mm, blonde hair or find someone who is wearing blue pants or blue sneakers. And again, you're mixing up the groups. And when the music stops, they have to find their person, giving them a bit of a time pressure there. Sound effects. There's this great app called Dramatic Music App. I think it's for iPhone, but there is a an Android alternative, and it has background music, dramatic music, comedy music, scary music, dun, 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 or sound effects, telephone ringing, alarm clock, drum roll, uh, game show, you know, laughter, and you could also play some of these sound effects or music as inspiration for a scene or a story that they're reading or writing. So I recommend it's you can download it on your phone or laptop, and it's great to have these sound effects or dramatic music or romantic music or sad music or something like that. And the last activity with music is a commercial jingle. I found this royalty-free commercial music. Here it is. So the creativity comes that each group is given a different product that they have to sell. Uh, they can It could be a magic product or a real product. And then they come up with the lyrics to the commercial with the melody, la, 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 la. And they invent the lyrics and make a commercial jingle to sell their product. Um, a lot of activities that I do, if you have more time, project-based learning, uh, lots of opportunities for your creativity. Uh, here are just four ideas. This is something, as I said, you wouldn't just do in 10 minutes, a longer project. Start a rock band, design a fashion show, make a TV news program, have your own Oscars Film Awards show. And all of these activities, you would get lots of student input to and guide them and help them but using their creativity and that is my session thank you so much for being here for listening i, I hope that these activities were um, useful that you can use them in the coming days or weeks happy holidays thanks
Thank you so much, Kai. Absolutely amazing. I love your, um, first and foremost, your energy. You've got so much passion for this. I just love how physical you are in that environment. I just love how you, <laughs> that's clearly how you are as a teacher. And it's really inspiring to see that. Yeah. Um, so we have had a question. Okay. One question that stood out to me was, um, Dr. Mansour Ali Darazi was asking, um, how can you develop creativity? In students and I think that opens sort of a can of worms of questions you know is is creativity is is create creative ability on a scale you know can it be assessed is it on a scale and if it is on a scale how do you analyze that and how do you push them and how do you find someone who's at a stage where actually they can probably do something a bit a bit deeper than this perhaps? I think the more activities you do which are open-ended the more opportunities you give that's as much as you can do. It's like having a sense of humor. You can't make someone have a sense of humor. You can only give them opportunities to laugh or be funny, but it's hard to force it. I think the more opportunities you have, people will get better. Practice. That would be my, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, right. Thanks, guys. Someone, someone, I just saw that the, the chat is like, but I, I did catch a question, which is about remembering students' names. There's a great activity, which is you uh, have your name with a gesture, like Sky or Louise, and then everyone repeats it. And sometimes the you can associate the name with the gesture, like that's a name remembering trick. Nice. Thanks, Kai. That's a really good idea. I was never good at remembering names, actually. <laughs> it's always the scary <laughs> bit, isn't it? It's kind yeah, of... Like, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Because so it's, it's, such make a a car, it? it's such an impersonal thing to do. It kind of destroys any relationship you've built up until that point. It's kind of semi-destroyed, isn't it? If you go, I've completely forgotten your name. Because it kind yeah. of detaches <laughs> you, doesn't it? You know. Thank you so much, Sky. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Thank so, you. Louise, great. That is it. We're done for another oh, year. Yay. <laughs> I, I don't want it to end. I know. Should we just stay here for a while longer? Should we just stay. Why aren't we doing the third evening session? <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. <laughs> Not this time. So but it means so that there's more for the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We've got, we've got to leave them wanting more. So um, also thank you to, I don't say this enough, but thanks so much for the uh, participants today. The chat was absolutely electric. It was just going on and on. And if I clicked off of it, it'd say I've got 54 new messages. And absolutely. It's, just, it's just really- It's still um, going. It's still going. Eh? Still going. It's just so <laughs> great to see that people are so up for communicating with the ELT, you know, once they're in that area with other ELTers. Everyone's just so up for talking to each other and messaging and reacting and responding and saying what they think and saying nice things. And it's just so, it's such, such a pleasant list of words to read. Um, I just have a, a sort of sad message to relay, uh, which is that I, I just got a, a, a voice message why, why uh, uh, Sky was, uh, was on from Margarita saying that she just got a message from her partner saying that uh, uh, he went out uh, uh, for a walk with that two dogs and uh, uh, there was some sort of you know traffic commotion one of the dogs got scared and ran away so poor dear she had to chase after the partner to try to find that doggy somewhere in in town so it actually is a stray dog would you believe oh so, my God. Uh, i'm just saying this now so everybody can send out good thoughts to margarita so that the yeah. dog is found wow uh, what, what yeah. a sad story yeah, yeah, but, but I, hopefully I, I thought I would share ending. it with you guys because I just know how much you enjoyed her session. So, uh, you know, if if you if you just can just you know, uh, mental awesome. good thoughts, you know, and angels and whatnot to Margarita so that the dog is found because poor dog, she was really yes. she was really distressed, which is why she's not with us now to say goodbye. Yeah, she just had to run away. Oh well, life. All our yeah. best thoughts yeah. are applying to her. All best thoughts. Okay, so um, you almost thought I was gonna say finish then, it's not. In a second, just got a couple of things to tell you about. So firstly, you're here, I assume, because you're interested in the topic of creativity, uh, but also in the topic of kindness and empathy and developing those skills in our um, young or, or middle-aged and anywhere in between or elder, you know, whatever age your students are, everyone wants to develop 
the ability to be more kind and more empathetic um, and more spirited within their community. So we've got a range of materials that we're giving away um, to for, for you. So some of it's teacher facing, some of it's for you to, to think about what you're doing in your lessons to develop, you know, to, to promote these um, to promote these these concepts within your lessons. But there's also some student facing stuff there too. So some actual uh, worksheets and handouts that you can use to encourage conversation and foster those really positive um, assets uh, in people. So on the Advancing Futures page, we've grouped it into global citizenship education, um, sustainability and diversity, equity, equity and inclusion. Uh, and there's a whole resources section there. And a lot of it is looking at things like, as you can see on the screen, kindness and respect, um, developing an inclusive environment in your classroom um, and making sure that everyone is learning within their community to, to be within their community and learning to be within the global community. There's all sorts there, that's all for you. This is where you can get it. You can scan the QR code um, or go to macmillanenglish.com slash advancing futures. Uh, it's all there, pretty easy uh, to find. 